these kids need a place. They need a place to go. They need a place to be seen. They need to feel like they're part of something and gaming concepts and esports teams brings that to these students. If you're gaming at home, right, they're, they're just online, they're with, could be with anyone. Within school, they're in that controlled environment where they are not only learning the skills necessary to compete in an activity, which are positive and that we know from traditional sports, but they're also learning how to self-regulate. It's generated a lot of interest in our district, both from the student perspective, from the parent perspective, and even our local board of ed. I'm not a gamer, I uh, probably will never be a gamer, but I believe in the impact that gaming concepts and esports teams has on these students. We are uh, so excited to have you guys here. Uh, that Halo playlist right there was just getting a little bit heavy there at the end, I was saying. So um, my name is Alex Herbie, um, and I work with Generation Esports as the integrations manager with the education team. Um, so I work closely with uh, Mike and Christy, the authors of Gaming Concepts, um, to uh, integrate uh, their, their curriculum and the courses that they write uh, into the online platform that you guys uh, may be using um, in, in the LMS system. So um, I'm so happy to have both of our guests today, um, as mentioned before, Michael Russell and Heidi Albin, um, both authors for the Middle School Gaming Concepts book, um, who are going to be talking about grant writing today. So um, I have limited experience with grant writing, so this will be informa informa uh, informational for me as well, um, and, and the process goes. I just... The most I know about grant writing is that there's a person at district office that does it, right? That some districts have that person, the grant lady or something like that. So um, if you're one of those districts, then you must be lucky because I know that not everybody has that luxury. So um, I'm going to let them introduce themselves. Um, so they can tell you about all their accolades and all of their awards and achievements and certifications uh, and why uh, they are going to tell you about grant writing. But um, again, thank you so much for being here. Uh, this is going to be awesome so that you can get some money for your esports program uh, or money other things in, in your district. Um, you might want some things for your classroom. A uh, couple of housekeeping um, items really quick. If you have questions, please throw those in chat and I will be monitoring chat the whole time um, as well as running the slideshow. So if you have any questions or comments, please throw those in chat and I can direct those to uh, Mike or Heidi um, and then we don't have to have them bothered um, by the, the chat uh, pinging them all the time. So thank you so much. So Mike, Heidi, take it away. Hey, thanks, Alex. Well, Alex pretty much took care of uh, my introduction. Uh, I, you know, I think people, if you've watched any of these webinars, you probably know about me or who I am, but um, I am excited to have Heidi here. Heidi is still a colleague, but we're, we don't work in the same building anymore, but we still are, are remain close friends. So um, we, we're at the same alternative school together, but during her time and uh, my time, she wrote multiple grants at our school and got some really cool things for our kids and and for our community. So I thought it'd be awesome to have her here. Um, I'll let her brag on herself a little bit. She probably won't brag too much, but there's some pretty cool things about her that, that I hope she'll mention. Um, and I also have uh, a fair amount of grant writing experience because I wrote the grants to get our esports program running. Uh, and got our equipment through, through multiple grants as well. So um, we, I think we have a great list of things here for you um, that we'll go over, but I'll let Heidi introduce herself first and uh, we'll go from there. Hello everyone, happy to be here. As Mike said, I got to be um, one of the co-authors on the curriculum for the middle school um, SEL eSports and uh, won a couple of education awards, which is kind of fun. And uh, my experience my, the first 11 years of my experience was in the alternative high school where we got to do education in a different way and do education in a way that really helped students and that students could connect to. And I got to witness Mike and Christy start the very first uh, esports team at our school and write the grant. And it was an honor to get to witness that, witness that process. And so it's fun that it has morphed into into more. So uh, I was able to write several grants while I was at that school as well. And I'll give you a little bit more information of those as examples as we talk about grant writing. Awesome. Thanks, Heidi. As I figured she would not mention, Heidi is a Milken Award winner, uh, an Education Milken Award winner, and also a Presidential Science and Math Guru winner person 
nice, awesome thing. She's very, very smart and very hard worker and, and does everything great for kids. So I'm, again, we're so happy to have her here. So, um, yeah, so we're going to talk a little bit about grant writing, but first I thought I'd start off with just a little bit of, um, why are we writing grants? So what technology might we need? How much is this gonna cost? Um, so I put like a, just a really basic list of things together for you all um, just to have as a reference. Um, I just checked all these prices yesterday. So just to kind of get an idea, give you an idea of kind of what kind of grant range you might be looking for as you're going out and maybe thinking about starting this. I did not include things like equipment or like chairs and, and desks, um, but I can get into that a little more if there's questions about that. But um, just looking yesterday on a couple of different websites, um, looks like PCs that'll, that'll run most of the games that we offer or all the games we offer actually, you're gonna be in the neighborhood of anywhere starting at 800 and you can, the sky's the limit on these things. So um, you could go to four or $5,000 a piece if, if you want to, but not definitely not necessary. And I would not recommend that. Um, monitors, I would say 150 to 300. And again, it's just totally going to depend, but you want to look for something with a higher refresh rate um, so that the kids not as strain, not as much strain on the kids' eyes and, and just gives them a little bit better experience and clarity when they're gaming. And then your mouse, keyboard, headphones, kind of your peripherals, anywhere from 150 to 200. You can probably do a little bit lower than that, but to get to get some good quality items that'll last your program a while. Um, this is basically what we spent um, when we started our lab. It was about $1,000 a PC. And those PCs are still used today at the school. So they're six years old now, which is hard to even say out loud, but um, yeah, that program's still running and it's been there for six years and they use the exact same their their video cards are um, 1060 video cards, so they're they're three generations old now. And the the only upgrade we really ever did to them is we went from a spin up drive to a solid state drive, just to increase the speed a little bit. So, um, if you're not looking to do gaming desktops, um, your consoles are going to range anywhere from 350 to 600. Just kind of depends on what you set them up with, what games you want to participate in, how many controllers you need any extra, you know, network adapters and things like that to make these work. Um, something that's often overlooked when we talk about consoles and PCs is you still need something like a monitor or television. You need something for these games to be played on. So do not overlook that when you're pricing these things out. I know it seems like common sense, but we have this discussion a lot with people in the schools who are starting a program and they have a PC, you know, in a PC, everybody just assumes they need a monitor, but oftentimes when you're you're looking for like a console, people forget that they need a television or a monitor to go with it. So um, just just throwing that out there to remind you. So you can probably get into a console for 500 to, you know, six, 700 bucks, just, um, you know, it just depends on what you want to build around your program. So, and what kind of games you want to participate in. So. And I um, think it's, I think it's worth noting, Mike, that projectors are not the best monitors for, no. for consoles or PCs. And a lot of times they're not built they're not built to handle all of the graphics coming through there. Um, yeah. I remember our IT guy always coming through um, and being like, "You, I, you, I'm not getting you another bulb because this is not what this projector is made for. So uh, keep Absolutely. that in mind as well. Yeah, if you are going to do projection stuff, you definitely want to invest in a 4K, you know, high end. Um, now the screens are so big, you could get an 85 inch television for probably a couple thousand dollars if you want to have that kind of experience for your kids, but um, definitely not required. Um, but Alex makes a fantastic point about and, and also it's they're not super easy to plug in like, you know, usually the, the your HDMI cables down here and your 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 consoles down here, but your projectors way up here. So running a cord all the way up there is not super easy sometimes. And unless you have the, the wall jack, which a lot of schools do have. So anyway, I just want to give you a brief rundown on kind of what just to have in your mind. So um, in our lab, we had 15 computers. Um, so we spent about $15,000 just on the equipment. And then we spent uh, uh, about another 10 to 15, I think on the, the desks and the chairs and things like that. So, but you do not need to do that. That's not required um, to do this, so. All right, now we'll get into why we're here. So 
Next slide, question, please. Question from oh, Kayla, yeah. from Kayla uh, sure. or hand raised. Um, I guess, Kayla, can you type it in chat? Unless I'm missing it, it was thrown in Q&A. Uh, uh, hand went down. That's okay. Maybe it was an accident. Might that happens. Yeah, sometimes. That's okay. sometimes I accidentally put my hand up too. So uh, if, she, if, if Kayla has a question, we will answer it as soon as she puts it in the chat. There so, we go. So Heidi, I will let you take this part and then uh, I can jump in when we need it. Excellent. So when I was writing grants, there were a few things I found that that were pretty helpful, specifically when looking for grants, because part of the issue in writing a grant is finding a grant to apply for. And I think sometimes that is as difficult as as actually writing the grant. Um, and so some some tips, as, as you can see on the slide there, you know, looking for grants that appeal to a large population, not limiting your not limiting yourself um, is, is one way to go. Another way to go um, is Google specific grants. I mean, sometimes if you're looking for something really specific, you can you can look, you can Google for something very specific because you never know what's going to show up. Of course, if there's nothing specific, you know, go for go for a larger um, general thing. Um, the, the way that I found the grant that I wrote for my facility therapy dog that, that I got when I was at the Ellen Churchill of high school was specifically searching grants for dogs in schools and was able to find very specific grants that were for that. And of this course, since it's this, I'm sorry. Uh, sorry, that was mine. Sorry. Okay. Um, and since it was matching exactly what I wanted to do, it was a lot easier to write the grant for that. Another thing that you can do is Google specific large corporations, for example, um, like Apple or, you know, Apple grants for schools or if Walmart, you know, it just like Google large corporations and start there and then see what they offer for education. A lot of times you can find educational organizations or, or networks and get on their newsletters and they will send you um, grant opportunities. That's how I found out about a grant that I wrote for a garden. It was through um, the Kansas Association for Conservation in, in Environmental Education, um, where they just talked about that grant and I hadn't really thought about it until I saw the grant and thought, that's a great idea. Another thing you can do is contact your local businesses um, for specifically for items. This doesn't usually work as well for money, but a lot of businesses are very happy to donate equipment. And so I was able to contact Academy Sports and ask them for some equipment for taking students on a camping trip. And they, they gave me the equipment instead of the money, which was even better than I didn't have to bother with buying, buying the equipment. Um, of course, there's things like donors choose uh, is always an option. Um, there's a place called Get Ed Funding. This is a place where you can it it pulls grants from all over the place, and you can get a membership, and you can um, it's it's a free membership, and and you can search specific grants by specific things. It's it's pretty handy. When I'm done talking, I can stick that in the chat for you. Uh, social media is a thing to use as well. I mean, you can put a request that says, hey, I'm looking to do this in my classroom. Does anyone know of any grants or of anyone who might, any company who might be interested in that? And you just never know what will, will come about from that. Um, Mike, anything to add about looking for grants? Um, the, the one thing that I wanted to just point out is on the, on the esports specific grants. So we have, we'll have company, we'll have people who go, well, how do I write, you know, grants specifically for esports? And um, right now, I honestly would not super encourage that. I, I would try to make it as broad of an audience as you possibly can. So multi-purpose that equipment. Don't just go into your administrator and go, yeah, I want to start an esports club. Some of them are super supportive, like mine, like our staff, and we and, and many schools across the country, but there are some who are very you know, this is new to them. They don't understand, you know, what esports is or gaming or, or even putting it into this curricular day. So, um, you know, don't go in there and just go fire right away at like, hey, I want to start an amazing esports lab because they may not be as receptive to it as, hey, I'd like to, you know, write a grant to get new equipment for our CAD lab or for our, you know, our, our uh, 
you know, digital design class. And I would also like to have esports with it. You know, I would like to multipurpose it. So just, just some tips around that to keep in mind. Um, that's yeah. really all I have to add to that. And part. I don't know if, you know, where, where these are, but um, in somebody that came from CTE, high school CTE area um, in my teaching career, um, Perkins grants were always great. And all you had to do was prove that it was uh, new and emerging technologies or new and innovative technologies, I think is the phrase. Um, and so a lot of times computers can be can be that um, and, and fit that bill very easily. So. Yeah. All right. So now I just have a few tips for after you find the grant to how to write it to ensure that you have the best chance possible of actually receiving the grant. And some things that I found out is if you will find the, if it's from a company, if you'll find the company or that organization's mission statement, and then frame your writing around that, that looks really good. Um, that, that works a lot of times. And so find what their mission statement is and incorporate that into your writing and how what you're doing is going to relate to their mission statement. Another thing is explain how you will give the company recognition or credit. So when I asked Academy Sports for some outdoor chairs to use on our camping trip, I asked them specifically for ones that had their logo, their, their logo on it um, and talked about how, hey, you know, this is going to be free advertising for you. And so if if you can talk about a way that you're going to give them recognition either online or if they can put their branding on it, something that shows the company that they're going to get something out of this too, that is, is really valuable to them as well. Um, I, I, I think Mike has some other examples of, um, do you have anything to add to that, Mike? Yeah. So if you do find a, uh... You know, a company who's willing to to participate, you can do like an esports event or, or you know, your grand opening of your of your lab, and uh, you know, have them be recognized as a sponsor or, or donating to your event. Um, I found that to be very helpful. Um, you know, even from jerseys, which we you know were able to get funded from a from a partner uh, who actually owned a truck accessory store that. Um, just wanted to be a participant in the community so you know we were able to reach out to them and they agreed to buy our jerseys for all of our team so um you know and then they came to like you know matches and, and were able to be a part of the opening of the lab so um i think you know anytime you can include uh any of these folks who donate money um it, it's good for them and it's it's great for them too honestly i mean they get press and they they do take pictures and as long as your school's okay with allowing them to take some media pictures um, you know, it, 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 it looks good for them to be a part of it too. So, uh, Mike, I like how you bring up using what you get to kind of serve the company as well. It reminds me of something I was going to mention. We asked for fishing equipment once and I asked the company, I said, Hey, if, if you'll donate fishing equipment, my students and I will put on a family fish day for your employees and their families. And so if it's a, esports thing, you know, think, being creative about, is there something you can do to give back to the company, even if it's um, having your students do something is, is usually pretty, pretty enticing to the company. Good PR. And, and, the, and I think what you did with the garden, the community garden, where it brought in different segments of the community, you know, you had the, you know, folks from the retirement community come and work with the little kids and then it was hosted at our facility. So I think there's a lot, you know, a lot of branding that can go on there and um, just those community opportunities right now are very huge. So I, I, there's a lot of, a lot of things you can do around just hosting an event and, um, and Heidi was great at that. So um, some other things that I, I just kind of listed out here. Uh, also look within your district for internal grant funding opportunities. We were actually able to get a couple of our, um, a couple grants from, uh, we had a, an organization that's funded by teachers who donate into this fund every year. And then they give out grants at the end of the year through our education foundation. Uh, and then there's also sometimes districts will take a chunk of like their, their, Te technology budget and they'll put it aside. So maybe like 50,000 or $100,000 
and they'll allow schools to apply for different types of innovative grants like Alex was alluding to earlier within the district. So they'll open that up and be like, hey, I want to try this cool new program. And it's really just a proof of concept for them. So a lot of a lot of districts do allow this to happen because they want to, you know, they want to try something on a small scale and not just like roll it out all across the, the district, but they rely on the teachers and administrators to find that innovative technology because they don't, you know, it's impossible to keep track of all of it, but there might be some cool, some cool new thing that they want to try on a limited basis and just see if it's worth expanding out, you know, in following years and attributing more budget to. So look for those kind of opportunities too. Um, your administrators, or if you're an administrator, you probably um, know of these opportunities because it was talked about in, in our admin meetings and different technology committees that we had. So um, I was fortunate to be on the technology committee after we got our grants. Um, that was kind of how I gave back. Um, so I gave my time to help approve other projects for others that were trying to, to get new technologies rolling in our district. So um, just make sure to speak to your administration before and during this process. Don't just go off and write the grant, not tell your administrator what's going on. They probably will not appreciate that. So um, particularly when you're talking about esports, again, I kind of alluded to this earlier that uh, you 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 definitely want to bring them along in this process. Again, many are supportive, but there are there are going to be hurdles. There's a lot of people you have to bring into this to get esports going. Um, not overcome, you know, all the obstacles can be overcome, but it is best to keep your administrator up to, uh, you know, up to date and just see if they have any input and. Um, just the fact that you're you're going after the grant and, and pursuing this on your own might show them that you're committed enough to, to get this off the ground and that might just win them over immediately. So um, I, you might have some input on this too, but make a master. If you're going to write a lot of grants, I would make a master copy <laughs> and put a lot of the same verbiage. You can really just copy paste, you know, especially like the generic, what school you're from, all those things. I would just make a master document where you can just take that information and plug it into these different grants because that's that's many of them are going to read the same um, to a certain point and then you're going to get to a point where you do have to differentiate depending on what they're requesting for and what their needs are so. Um, and I'm just going to throw this out here you may or may not like this, but chat GPT might also be super helpful if you're looking to write. Um, some introductory stuff or or at least get you started on answering the questions that kind of come up in some of these articles. So um, just saying, you can use that if you want. <laughs> you don't have to. Um, Heidi, do you have any comments on like the master copy? I don't know if that's what you typically did or how that how that worked for you, but absolutely that saves a lot of time because the more grants you apply for, the more, chances you have to get one and and if especially um there's a lot of grants where you submit the writing in sections through an online portal and if you type it all in there and then you lose the screen you've lost all your work so type it in a master copy first copy and paste it in there i mean pretty basic advice but sometimes we we forget about it but yeah being able to copy and paste and then just change it around is a huge huge help save you a lot of time yeah and as educators it's not like our day goes as planned right like we never know exactly what's going to happen and you might sit down on your plan and start to write this you know relatively short document of two or three pages um, for a grant and then you know get called away whatever and then you go back and it's like oh your application timed out you get to start over so it's it, and i've had this happen to me multiple times because i apparently don't learn my lesson i do know better now um, so that's why I have a master document with all this information in it so that this doesn't happen to me anymore. Um, so, and, and really once you get that started and it's great for replication and we'll talk a little bit about this on the next slide, but like, um, I, I wrote grants to like 40 different Walmarts when I got our lab funded, we didn't get grants from all of them, but it was basically 40 grants of the same thing. So I didn't go in and like fill out each one every time I had a master document. And then I went in and filled them all out. Um, fun fact, store managers at Walmart can approve up to, last I knew, was uh, $1,000 at the store level. So they do not have to get district approval. So if you go to them and and maybe with a uh, opportunity to fund something in your 
community or your school, they may just approve it and send you a check. And that happened to us a couple of times. So just throwing that information out there. Someday Walmart's going to catch on and they're going to figure out I do that on everything I talk about. But for now, it works out well. So eventually they might come after me and go stop saying that. But for now, it works. So. Mike, I do have one more thing to sure. add that I Absolutely. just thought of is be prepared for the amount of work that is required after receiving a grant. Um, there's going to be documentation. There's going to be, you know, a lot of grant places will ask you to promote it on social media. And so be, be ready that, you know, receiving the grant is only the beginning of the work that that you need to do. Um, it can be quite extensive. And so be prepared for that, especially if you get more than one grant at a time, uh, you'll have quite quite a workload to, to do that, which is why there are districts that have someone who it's their full-time job to do grants. <laughs> Absolutely. That's a great point, Heidi. Like um, many of the grants that we receive, we do have to do, they do, there is follow-ups and they check on you to make sure the money was used. So they asked for documentation and reports. And so those are things that definitely keep in mind as you go through this process that um, you will, um, you will have a lot, you will have more work on the back end. So don't just think, yeah, I wrote the grant and I got the money. And it's a great feeling. I mean, it was awesome. I got a huge check for one of them. It was like, yay, um, you know, and, and I actually walked around with it because that's how I am. But I mean, it's a great feeling that there was there was work on the back end. So don't don't forget that there, like Heidi said, there's there's more things to do once you're done. Not to mention once you get the money, you have to purchase all the equipment and get with your, you know, whoever, you know, orders your technology. That funding has to specifically go to that and then they have to order it and they'll have a vendor that they need to use. So um, you know, especially if you get some of the grants that are on this list in front of you, like Dell. If you get a grant from Dell, they're probably going to ask that you use Dell equipment. So you need to kind of have that in mind as you go go through this process. So, um, but I went through, and um, so these are just the grant resources I and I think Alex has these pulled up separately, so we can we can look at them individually. But um, the big one is Esser. You know, a big one is Esser three. Um, you still still are able to use these funds, um, especially for student engagement, attendance, after school programming for at risk youth, um, things like that. There's a huge slideshow. We have a link in the in the in the webinar. We can um, if you request it, I'm sure we can mail this uh, or we can email this out to you, this presentation or share it with you. So um, it has all the links hyperlinked for you. So um, Walmart, this is the Walmart grant that that I've I've always been a big proponent of. So um, Gives you like the, so that's something you want to also be aware of, like when is the application open? When does it close? When do they actually award the money? The, what's the grant cycle? So if you're trying to get funding for February, you know, for fall, uh, you know, you would have need to probably or, you know, already applied by April or wait till May 1st and try to get it in by July so you can get your funding in um, for your for your labs at, or, or your equipment at this point. So um um, they'll always have an eligibility checklist. So, and, and schools are going to fall into this um, almost every time. And then they'll sometimes have specific areas where they want you to use the money. So, um, almost every time education will be on there, but there there's going to be other things that um, you may fall under depending on who the the grant, uh, the person awarding the grant is or the company. So. Um, DODEA grants, now this is an interesting program and this is something relatively new that we've learned about. Um, if your school has 10% enrollment of military personnel, uh, of children or, or people who are in the military, um, you're eligible to, to apply for DODEA grants. And these are through the Department of Defense. And you can see down there, um, they've awarded 475 grants for over $522 million. Um, over their lifetime. So with this one particularly, you there is a process before you apply for the actual grant. So you have to become like a, it's UEI approved. And it's just a short little questionnaire basically to make sure you are eligible for these types of things for these grants. And then you just go through and, and it asks for like what you're going to use, you know, standing up an esports lab. And they are very, I will say they are very interested in esports. 
Um, they actually reached out to us because they're trying to get more programs going and they have schools who know could utilize the funds. So um, I would definitely, if you fall into this category where you have at least 10% of your school's population, uh, their parents are in the military, I would definitely look at this one as a, as a valuable resource. So um, this is grants.gov. It basically is the how-to of, of doing grants and how to write them and and uh, it even it even has like ways to search grants um, and you can get in there and get as nitty gritty as you want. So um, eSports, I, I didn't even try it. I don't know if you can try to search it on there, Alex, or not, but um, yeah, we'll see if anything pops up. Uh oh, might have to check technology. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You how you search these things is going to make a difference. So um there you go so it might not it might not fit the exact parameters of esports but you can see there's 1200 results for grants for technology so part of your process is going to be thinning this down into areas where you might be able to utilize these grants for what you're trying to do um but the keywords are definitely like alex mentioned is innovative technology um, and you can even refine it a little bit to who's eligible for it on the side there, like Alex is doing. Um, you know, there's also, this site also has other things besides grants. So there's different co-op agreements and things like that you might be able to do. So um, this is just a great resource to go through. Um, I just put up Cox Communications because that's our internet provider around here, but every, uh, most internet providers are going to have uh, something available to their community, community grants. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute once we get done going through these, but it has all the regions for you. Um, and then each region does have a specific grant for it. Um, and then you it shows an email that you can contact, but um, I think they do have a link also to their actual application on here. So, um, yeah, there you go. So you can just click on it and it'll tell you you know, kind of give you an idea of what they're doing. Um, Target, I just put Target because it's, you know, I didn't even know Target had one, to be honest. I went in and searched yesterday um, and I I kind of put this in the slide and you, you can't see it right now, but if you go in and type a specific company and community grant or, or, or something like that, you're probably going to find their page. If you go to their website, they kind of hide them. So to try to dig down and try to find them is a little more difficult, but if you just search target and community grant, which is exactly what I did, it brought me to this page and it brought up their entire grant funding program. So, um, so just a little tip there. Um, look inside of the esports uh, community. So this is Epic Games. Um, they make a little game called Fortnite <laughs> and Rocket League. So if you're familiar with those, um, but they have something around um, their creators um, for their game creators, but also for education. So um, if you're looking to start a program and, and you're going to incorporate uh, Unreal Engine into their into your learning, um, there there are opportunities for you to apply for grants to get funding um, for your kids to work on projects like this. So game development, film and TV, education is a big one. And then, you know, the tooling and open source development. So. Um, but this is also eligible for people who are not in education. You can also apply if you're creating something on your own and they, you can also apply for without that. So if you have a student who is working on a project outside of school or even during school and you want them to apply for something like this, they certainly can and they might be eligible to get a grant. And I think they go anywhere from 5000 to $500,000 on this particular one. So. And then I put the Dell Foundation on here because uh, I wanted to highlight some tech donors as well. And, and the Dell Foundation doesn't exclusively work on tech. They do a lot of, of a lot of things in the community. So, uh, but again, they have a system where you apply, you, you have to fill out this form and then they give you the option to apply after you've filled out this form. So there are sometimes a couple steps you have to go through and it'll, you know, it'll explain to you what the requirements are and what what kind of time commitment and how the funding window opens and closes and 
Um, so some of these things, like, again, you do have to watch, like, like on the DODIA grants, I know they close in March, but they open again in October. So um, if you've missed, you know, missed that deadline, hit into October, go ahead and get everything, start getting everything ready. I mean, you can go ahead and fill out the application. You just can't submit it until October. So, sorry, that was a lot. Any questions so far? Um, anything come up that uh, I missed while we were going through all of that? So, and I think that this is good. Like, you know, if it, if you guys want, please let us know. Um, drop your email in the in the chat if you'd like a copy of this, because um, you know it's it's tough just to just search all these or, or you know Google all these things. So um, if you'd like a copy of this, please throw your email in the in the chat, and we will email you a copy of this presentation. Um, Heidi, did you have anything? Sorry, I went through that without bringing you in, but um, anything that you wanted to add on any of those things or anything that you have to touch on? Nope, nope, we're all good. Okay. Okay. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit more about the ESSER funding. Um, just wanted to kind of actually just show this off and, and we can also provide this to you as well. But um, this is actually a presentation that uh, one of our schools did for a for funding with using their ESSER funds in Kansas. Um, and it was created by a student. A student created, created this whole presentation to present to their board. And they were approved for to use their ESSER funding for that. So, you know, don't be afraid to utilize your students. You know, that they have a passion for this as well. So, uh, and this kid, I mean, we went through conversations with this student for probably a month and a half before we realized he was a student. Um, it was kind of a, he didn't even tell us he was a student. And then all of a sudden he's like, well, I have to get my, my coach on so he can talk to you about more of the, of the stuff. And it was like, oh, we didn't. Anyway, this is kind of that. This is their presentation for what they use to get the ESSER funding um, approved by their board. Um, now the board would have to get to some other approvals to get the funding approved, but um, the ESSER funding is there just depending on how they're going to allocate it. So and some schools have already allocated all of it. So you'd have to check with your district to find out um, if it's available. So, um, so yeah, um, went through that really fast, but uh, this is all available to you. I don't, do you have anything else, Alex? Any questions, Heidi, anything to add? We went through fast, but. I just say, go for it, you know, I mean, yeah, it's it's disappointing if you spend a lot of time writing your grants and then you don't get it. But the more grants you write, the better you get at it and the better you get at figuring out exactly what they want and kind of speaking their language to get the grants. And I mean, obviously, as, as Mike said, be sure you talk to your administration first, <laughs> but, you know, get creative and and just try it out because you might get it. And, and then you never know what's going to happen from there. So just, just go for it. Yeah. A lot of these grants are not applied for. I mean, there's a lot of grant money that just sits there that doesn't get applied for because people don't know about it. So it does, it does behoove you to kind of look around and do some digging and figure out what might work best for you and your situation. But, um, you know, I don't know, I don't know how you had this experience, but I mean, I think I wrote over 40 over 40 some grants before our lab was fully funded. Um, so to the to the point where I would like it to have been. I mean, we could have probably got by with less, but I wanted it to be a certain way. And um, so, but yeah, I mean, we were denied way more than we were accepted. Um, you just gotta keep, you just keep going for it and, and, and try to get this done. And, um, you know, if you need help with any, any type of verbiage or language or, you know, even finding equipment that you want to put in the grants, please reach out. We're happy to help with any of those things, any resources that we have. Um, we have up-to-date tech specs that we can provide you with, what specifically computers you might want. So we're certainly able to get you all of that information if you if you do pursue uh, grant writing to get these labs funded or technology funded. So, Mike, um, Heidi, what, I know, and this is kind of region specific, but what, I know, um, companies or grants have you had the most success with 
and does it determine a grant success based on the size of the application in your experience? The size of the application? You mean like yeah. how much writing you have to yeah. do? I think I think there's a little bit of a weeding out process. The grants that require a lot more work to apply for, you're going to have fewer people apply for them. Um, of course, you're also going to be competing against people who are very serious about it. So I think that can play into it. And I'll let Mike answer who he's had the best experience with, because the grants I've gotten, they've been pretty specific, like the one for the garden was was from an organization. Um, so as far as companies, Mike's had more experience with writing grants to companies. Yeah, I would say, um, yeah, I, I, it's been interesting because I've been awarded things from large corporations and and, and literally mom and pop shops. So, um, and some of the mom and pops are just, you know, you walk in and you say, hey, we're just trying to, you know, there's no grant process, right? It's just, we want to get some jerseys for our kids and can you help us do that? And they're like, sure, I'll throw in a couple hundred bucks. So, um, so I would say uh, the smaller, the smaller they ask, the more likely you'll get it um, was, is what I would say. So if you want to break it up into chunks, you know, that's one way to do it. So instead of saying, I want to write one grant for $20,000 to fully fund my lab, maybe look at four or five smaller different grants that you can use instead of going large like that because as Heidi mentioned those those larger grants are going to be more difficult to fill out but also take longer typically in my in my experience there's going to be a lot longer approval process and there's going to be a lot more caveats on how you can use it and when they distribute the money and um, you know some of those grants if you get a three hundred thousand dollar grant they're going to be like well you get fifty thousand you know right now and then a hundred thousand later and a hundred thousand later so you kind of have to budget for that as well. So um, take that into account when you're doing that. But um, I, I would focus, if it was me, I would definitely focus on your, things in within your community, within a you know 30 to 50 mile radius of, of what you're doing. Um, because I think that's gonna, uh, you know, your biggest promotion as a school that you can do for them is like, hey, we're gonna have an event. We'd love to, you know, have you all there. Um, we. Something else we did at our school, we would, you know, we did a Thanksgiving dinner and we would get the turkeys donated. Well, we always propped up a, you know, hey, these turkeys were given to us by Walmart. And, you know, you know, they and they would come by and they would take a picture showing that Walmart was up there and they gave us the turkeys, right? So I think anytime you can get the community involved in it and and they think they're and they know they're contributing to the community and providing something, I think that is always more successful in my mind. Um, and one other thing as I thought about as, as you guys are talking about, you know, seeking out these these types of fundings, um, be careful with things like GoFundMes because districts sometimes have policies in place that, you know, restrict you or prohibit teachers from posting on um, a GoFundMe page um, and you can get in trouble. Um, so that, that goes back to that, you know, talking with your administration to make sure that they are in the loop about what you're asking for, because GoFundMe, while can be great for some things, um, you know, in in an administrator's eyes, looks bad because it seems like the school can't pay for things, um, is the the explanation that we always were told because we were we were banned at uh, at my district from from uh, doing GoFundMe's, but um, but yeah, to keep that in mind and, and to let your administrators know for sure. Yeah, we, we did have some success with donors choose, uh, I believe, at our school, didn't we, Heidi? Like, didn't you get something or did yeah. we all get something? I don't remember what that was, but what the butterfly was that? enclosure. Oh, yeah. Cool. Yeah. yeah, I remember. Yeah. And it seems like we got monitors or something through some kind of grant from somewhere. I don't remember if that was Dell. Kind of when COVID started, they they provided monitor like second monitors to a lot of the teachers, a lot of the schools who would apply mm -hmm. for them. I remember so, that. Yeah. Um, so, you know, obviously not an opportune time, not a not anything we want to go back to is COVID, but it did, you know, those opportunities might still be there. So you might look into those things and it might allow you to kind of get some equipment donated that way as well. So all right. Does anyone have any questions um uh, you know for for Mike or Heidi um about grant writing or you know brainstorming some things with us or 
one, yes, one other thing. There are people, if you don't have a district person who's a grant writer, there are people out there who will do it for, you know, X amount of dollars for grant, or, or you can just hire them to write so many grants. Um, so if your district, you know, or your building administrator has building funds available or something where you just can pay somebody, you know, you can identify like, hey, I want to do, you know, I want to target, you know, one large grant and maybe four smaller grants and they'll come up with a pay structure for that. That's another option. Um, just, I wanted to throw that out there before I forget, but I think, you know, don't, don't feel like you have to do all this yourself. It is possible to, to have someone um, do this for you. And if your administrator is, is willing to, you know, pay a little bit for it, I mean, probably anywhere from 500 to a thousand dollars, you can get somebody who will write multiple grants for you. So, sorry. Okay. Now we can wrap. Sorry. You're good. Um, so if anybody has any questions, just go ahead and, you know, you throw them in chat, but um, we'll end just a little bit early here. Um, uh, you know, you guys can have the rest of your evening to yourselves and, and to your family. So we so appreciate you guys being on here. Um, if you sent your email to us in chat here, we will send that copy to you. Also, everything will be available. This whole presentation will be available on our, our YouTube channel um, later this week. Um, so you can search gaming concepts on YouTube. Um, and uh, it was on the slide previous. Um, I was showing with the QR codes, but gaming concepts on YouTube. Um, it's got that logo right there. You can see all oh, my fingers disappearing, but it's got that logo right there. You can see it um, and you'll know it's us. So thanks again for everybody being here. We appreciate it um, and good luck with your grant writing. Thanks. Thank you.